In today's video, I show my first impressions, unboxing, and several tests trying out my new Rosa Gallery watercolors. These are from the Ukraine and they're full artist grade. I decided to get them for several reasons, one of which was this classic set actually has several pigments I don't have in my collection and as I like to collect pigments at this point, it was a good way of getting a bunch of cadmium colors that I simply don't own, as well as the green PG8 that isn't available as easily in other brands. Another reason I got it is it comes in a nice tin. It seems to be a fair amount of paint for the price, and I've heard many things about the flow of this paint. I've heard that it's extremely flowy and more unique, and most similar to the core watercolors. I'm in Canada and the core watercolors are extremely expensive, so I felt this was a better deal to try this style of watercolors. And I have to say that it's interesting that they have a nice, cool way of opening, as you can see from the package. Now, the labels peel off easily, which took me a minute to figure out, and you can just trim down the sides like I'm doing with the scissors, and the labels actually have information on them, and you can make sure that the information tends to be on the side of the pans. There were a couple mistakes. There was one pan that didn't have the pigment label on the side, but other than that, they're really good. They're also quite quick to open. The formulation seems a little on the moist side, and they're very easy to re-wet. It seems very easy to pick up a lot of color accidentally, and I might go through these paints a little quicker. And I'm hoping that eventually the tubes will be available in Canada, because as of right now I can't find the tubes, but there are a few colors that are more bright, like the Opera Rose, I would like to get in this brand. And here is me organizing them. Now, I didn't like the color order they came in, so I reorganized them in more of a rainbow order. However, I decided to keep all the earth tones in the rainbow order, so I decided to put the tones in an order where I still was putting the earth tones that were closest to red near the reds, the most orange earth tones by orange, the yellowish earth tones by yellow, etc. And I feel like I'm getting more and more interested in mixing earth tones and bright colors together and making more complicated custom colors. So I'm starting to really want things to be in a more proper rainbow order that includes the earth tones. But each time I make a palette or get a palette, I keep kind of changing it up a bit. Here I'm doing my initial swatching on some really cheap Dollarama sketchbook paper. And this is just to get the initial first impressions of the colors. This is not paper that you're supposed to even use watercolors on, so it's probably not showing them at all to their best. But I found they were still really pretty and worked really well on this paper, which I also have been constantly forcing to work with watercolors, regardless of whether or not you're supposed to. And I found this was a good way of not wasting more expensive paper to get an initial first impression of each of these colors. As you can see, I'm also taking a little bit of time and effort to water down sections of it, and I'm holding up these different colored cardstock cards to just check the undertone of the colors so I can put them in the exact correct order in the closest section of the rainbow. I found holding up the colored cardstock really made it clear to me which color was more red or orange or yellow or green. Now, this is the final order I was doing it in. As you can see, some of them seem to be filled in a bumpy way and some of them seem to be filled more in a flat way. I'm showing these different papers. I decided to test out on on my paper test papers, the same color. I'll ask you to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're really enjoying my content. And I was testing it out on all sorts of different papers to see how it worked differently on different papers. Actually, I was blending two colors, the indigo and the turquoise. And as you can see, the paints do look different on different papers and you can force the paint to work on any paper. I say that that's true for watercolors all the time but it's easier and harder to do things on different papers and some techniques simply won't work on the wrong paper. I think it's worth doing paper tests and testing different things out on all your own papers and seeing which ones can work for different techniques for you rather than just assuming you can only use watercolor paper. I'm doing the labeled swatches. One swatch is gonna go up in the window to test the light fastness myself. The other one goes in a paper protector I keep with me. I have a big stack of pages and paper protectors that have 
all the different swatches of my art supplies I use, as well as some color mixes and notes like that. I also have little books, like you saw a second ago, with palette circles in them, and they also have notes on color mixing that I can use. I'm switching back here. This is my Rosa Gallery page of that palette circle book and the separate palette circle that I'm making as a gift I can give away. It's pretty easy to do two at the same time. As you can see, I fade from one color to the next by adding a bit of the color that it's heading towards a bit at a time till it's more and more till it's almost the next color. So it makes a beautiful gradient. I've been making these for a little bit. I actually saw the idea, I forget where, somewhere on YouTube. And I think it was for a stamp that makes these makes a similar circle that you can make palette circles. This is a really good way, I think, of making a beautiful artwork at the same time as testing out color mixes. And I prefer doing these palette circles to any sort of rectangular or square color mixing because I think I prefer circles to rectangles or squares most of the time. I prefer circles, ovals, triangles. I prefer those shapes to squares and rectangles. Although I'm not saying I never like anything square or rectangular, but I just prefer. And the thing is that this classic color set has a lot of the more toxic but real ingredients. And for me, I was missing a lot of cadmium colors. I just simply didn't own them. So getting some in the full artist grade. Now, now that I have ones I know are full artist grade, I actually can compare to some of my old artist grade paints that were given to me in an old palette. And I actually think I did have some real cadmiums. I was looking at those old paints ages ago and I was like, hmm, these could be real cadmiums. And I think they are because I think I have some that match color wise really close. There's a thing about them. They're very bright and kind of almost like kiddish and garish, but they also are very, very light fast. And they're also, they have their own properties. They're a little more opaque and they mix, I find they mix interestingly. So it's good to have them for my collection. The other thing I did notice is these paints are more flowing. They do flow differently than the other paints I own, but each brand and each thing you try is different. And it's also different mixed together because I also mix my gouache and my watercolors and every brand together. And it's also different on different papers. So really, I just advise you do a lot of experimenting, a lot of tests. Another tip I can give is to take written notes as well. Literally write out some notes, keep them in a book. And as you can see, I have these color mixing circles all noted out in this book and I can easily grab it and open it up and look at it and remember how these colors mix and I can add more palette circles and go. One thing I do is I draw these circles out ahead of time using very waterproof ink so completely waterproof and I give it at least eight hours to dry so there's absolutely no chance there'll be any bleeding. As you can see I'm going through and doing some more circles. Now you don't have to do rainbow order and you can add in earth tones and you can put any colors you want next to each other. These don't have to be actual rainbow order color palette circles. I'm finding I do really like these paints. And after making this video, which I actually filmed a while ago now, a couple months ago, I believe, it's just taken me a while to actually get to the voiceover. I find I really enjoy them and I pick up this palette often. It's pretty heavy and bulky, but at the same time it has a lot of mixing area and I find I really enjoy the paints. The fact that they're in closer to full pan size, although they are a little smaller than actual full pans, they don't hold as much paint, they're not as deep and they're not quite as big. They're better for getting my brushes in without crowding the brush or risking to damage the tip of the brush. According to my research, there's not quite as much paint in there as there would be in properly dried down full pan so I'm a little suspicious that it's not quite as much worth the money as it looks like. It was $90 in Canada which is still fairly expensive but for a lot of a variety of full artist grade paints the tin itself should also be marked as worth $20 because buying an empty tin just like this off of Amazon is $20. So I do think that it's definitely worth the price in Canada given everything you get in it. Also, I've, as I said, I've been using these paints a lot. I've been really enjoying them. They're, they are particularly flowy. They rewet really easily. And I find them really enjoyable and fun. I'm hoping that the tubes become available when I have some money in the future and in Canada, as I said, because I want to get some more pink tones. I want to get like opera rose and quinacridone rose and a couple other colors like that that are missing in this classic set because this classic set is going with the really classic old-fashioned sort of pigments more which more of this set 
is what I was missing in my collection. That's why I bought this one instead of the more floral bright one that I still wanted all the colors from. But as I said, I was thinking about what was more cost effective for filling gaps in my collection. In a moment, I'm going to show a painting I did entirely with the Rosa Gallery paints on the Strathmore 500 series 100% cotton mixed media paper. I printed out the line art I done digitally after putting it from my iPad onto my computer. And the ink in this way is not actually completely waterproof. So there is a slight bit of bleeding from the inks as well. But I really think this paper works well with the flowiness of these paints and it is one of my higher quality papers. Now I'm going to list the different pigments and paint names in the set. Carmine. PR170 colon 1. Matter Red, PR177 plus PR264. English Red, PR101. Cadmium Red Medium, PR108. Cadmium Red Light, PR108 and PO20. Burnt Sienna, PR101. Cadmium Orange, PO20 plus PY35. Mars Brown, PY42, PR101 and PBK7. Sepia, PBR7 plus PBK7 and PR177. Golden Yellow, PY110. Raw Sienna, PBR7 and PY42. Yellow Ochre, PY43 and PY42. Cadmium Yellow Deep, PY35 and PO20. Cadmium Yellow Light, PY35. Cadmium Lemon, PY35. Umber, PBR7. Olive Green, PG171. Sorry, PG-17 plus PY-1 plus PBK-7. Green, PG-8. Emerald green, PG-7, which is just a thalo green. Turquoise, PB-15 colon 3 plus PG-7. Blue, PB-15, which is a basic thalo blue. Blue in Danthrone, PB-60. Cobalt blue, PB-28. Ultramarine, PB-29. Indigo, PB-15 colon 1, PB-19 and PBK-7. Violet, PV23, which is a diaxazine violet. Payne's Gray, PB15, colon 1, plus PB19, plus PBK7. And Neutral Black, PB15, colon 1, plus PBK7, plus PR177. There are some colors here that don't really need to be mixes, but are. I think it's odd, because I've heard cadmium orange is normally just PO20, but for some reason this one's a mix. I personally don't find mixes muddier, although that's commonly a rumor. I think it's just the pigment qualities that affect things. So if pigments are more opaque, it's more likely to make things seem muddier to a lot of people's eyes. Whereas if pigments are more translucent, things appear less muddy when mixed. But it all depends on the paper and the individual preference. I also don't mind mud because I like that look as well. This is a paleo artwork of Ophiacodon, a synapsid more closely related to mammals than to modern reptiles. I went through a lot of trouble to make sure the plants were correct for the time period, as well as research to do a proper composition, and did a lot of thumbnails and working things out, and I hope you enjoy the final artwork. I do highly recommend the Rosa Gallery watercolors. They seem to layer well, flow well, and are high quality pigments and paints. Here's a final look. Once again, that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and will see you with another one very soon.